eyebrows when Princess Fiona introduces her husband. In-laws and ogres don't mix in Shrek 2, your big, big movie tomorrow at 25 to 7, but now Shortland Street. Are you sure you don't need a hand? Like I said, two more nurses would be good. You sure you're okay with pain? Mm, I just got the pressure this morning. What about the baby? Pushing yourself this hard will take its toll. We'll be fine, Maya. I know what I'm doing. Greg, um, I don't feel so... Alice. Alice, can you hear me? if you got my discharge papers. If not, then... Hi. Scarlett, I didn't know you were back. Early flight this morning. I popped in to see Dad, but he's busy. Oh. And Yvonne said that you were in here. Yeah. Fun, fun. What's wrong? Nothing serious? No, no, just a bit of high blood pressure. Happens in some pregnancies. Pregnancies? No, oh, your dad hasn't mentioned it. No, not a word. How pregnant are you? 24 weeks. Oh, why wouldn't Dad tell us? I mean, I know you two had that tiff over that TV show, but... It is Dad's baby, right? Uh, well, that, my dear, is the million-dollar question. I've just seen Scarlett. Wonderful to see her again. Uh, no, sorry. I knew you were busy and she was asking if Alice was around, so... So you sent her through? To the ward. OK, I'd better go and find her then. But before you do, you need to fill these in. Assessment forms for the current future health initiatives. Ron, I'm flat out. Paperwork is the last thing that Yeah, I... well, please don't shoot the messenger. I've had enough of that from this slot. Some of them have been waiting all night, which is why I am playing Fairy Godmother again. Morning. This is garbage, Chris. It's all well and good to come up with theories on how to reduce waiting times. But are these so-called initiatives making a shred of difference? There do appear to be a number of systemic problems still unsolved. Morning. Morning. Thanks again for last night. I had a wonderful time. Well, thank you for putting up with all those beady eyes judging your every move. Oh, shush. Everyone I met was lovely. Good luck, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, you two. Morning. Libby. Did those two arrive together? Which two? Brooke and Chris. I didn't notice. Why? You didn't notice. You're the admissions clerk. It's your job to notice. Right now, my job is to ease stress. So if you'll excuse me. Tea? Biscuit? Is this a joke? I know you've been waiting here a long time, but I thought... A cup of cold slop and a manky biscuit is supposed to make up for it. If you just calm down, sir, I can tell me what to do. Oi! Yvonne is doing her best to ease a very difficult situation, you ill-mannered, ungrateful pig. What did you call me? If I was you, I would apologise. Right now. I'm sorry. It's fine. Everyone's a bit stressed. Chris Warner is a miserable sneak. <laughs> What's he done now? I had assurance from him that he'd leave my staff alone. Now I find out he's been sounding out my senior registrar for a position in his unit. Who, Duncan King? Yeah. I've been grooming him for a consultancy, supporting him through his part twos. Now he's ready. Chris thinks he can swan in and take him away. Mm. So you head him off at the pass, sign Duncan up before Warner can say another word. Any contract I offer Duncan is going to have to be sufficiently attractive. I don't know if I have the budget. So you work out what you'd like to offer him, and then I give it a big tick. I like the way you work, Dr. McCullough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, but you'd be in the select minority. Oh, why do you say that? Someone been giving you a hard time? I busted a gut for ED yesterday, got Valentine what he wanted. And what do I get in return? A grudging thank you and a big dose of blame for Alice's collapse, as if I'm the one who made her come to work with hypertension. That's just Craig. He's a hothead. Yeah, well, he's not the only one. They're all comparing me to Chris Warner. I swear they're itching for me to fail. You can't let them get to you. You know you're doing a great job. Yeah. Problem solving is what I'm good at. It, it really fires me up. But just a smidgen of gratitude of respect would go a long way. Not even you can change the attitude of an entire staff overnight. 
But you can win support one person at a time. How's that? Give them what you need. A little respect, gratitude. Make them feel noticed. See what happens. Hmm. You never told me about the hospital having a makeover. Yeah, well, shiny and new, eh? There's something else you didn't tell me. That Alice is pregnant. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you'd bring that up. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to. You know, I went to see her. It's all really complicated, sweetheart. Oh, she got drunk one night, made a mistake. Now you're not sure whether the kid is biologically yours. Right, she filled you in well and truly. Well, someone had to. The whole time you were in Perth and you had all this on your mind and you never thought to mention it to me or Jake. Actually, what I had on my mind was you. Getting you well. I am well. I am, Dad. I've had loads of counselling and done heaps of thinking. I'm a different person to a year ago, even a month ago. It's great you're feeling happier. But you're not happy, are you? It's just work right now. It's more Don't use work as an excuse. Just think about it. Does it really matter who the baby's father is? Well, it's not like she was off having an affair, lying to you week after week. She'd been through a horrible, traumatic thing with that murderer guy. She went a bit nuts. Loads of people go through nutty stages. Hello? Yeah, look, I understand all that. But what? What if I'd turned out to be Uncle Brett's daughter? You didn't. But what would you have done? I brought you up. I love you. It's a completely different thing. And you still love Alice, don't you? I'm sorry, sweetheart. You're walking out on me now. I'll buy you lunch later, OK? IV, one o'clock. I'll see you there. And you'd better have some answers. So, uh, you've had a chance to consider my offer? I'm going to have to say no. I'm staying with Justine. And what's she offering? Regular theatre list, good money, ongoing training. Difficult for a new consultant to turn down. Exactly. But I'm sure I can come up with something equally, if not more, attractive, so don't sign anything yet, OK? OK. Matt's off. Chris Duncan's mine. Well, he told me he was still considering his options. I think you'll find he'll stay right where he is. This is for you to sign. Thank you. Was there something else, Libby? Actually, I am a bit worried about Craig Valentine. I think he may be stressed or overworked or both. There was this incident in triage. Ah, go on. Well, this patient was having a go at Mum and he stepped in to defuse the situation, but he went a bit over the top. I see. I'd hate for him to blow a fuse. So would I. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, Libby, when was your last pay review? Actually, I am overdue. Riley talked about giving me a pay rise and some time off for MBA studies, but well, now she's gone and nothing happened, so... MBA studies, that's a good idea. Would uh, one afternoon a week do it? I don't know. I well, it's just while you're starting out. Obviously, we'd set aside greater blocks of time, depending on the course. That'd be fantastic. Hmm. And as for a pay rise, um, say 10% effective next month? Yes, thank you. This isn't because of what I just told you about Craig. You think I'm rewarding you for narking? No, that's not my style. Sorry. No, you're a valuable staff member, and upskilling you makes you even more so. Yeah, agreed. Satisfied employee is a loyal employee, I believe. Yes. <laughs> Please, tell me I'm ready to be discharged. You know that's not my call. Dr. Badley will be along soon. Badley? Ugh, I've been waiting here all day. How are you feeling? Like I'm ready to be discharged. Have your headaches and your dizziness gone? Yes, and my blood pressure will have come down after the meds last night. Hmm. It's much better. 130 over 85. So I tell Badley to come in here and sign my discharge papers. I'll give him a hurry up. And once you get home, you should stay there. Take time off, you mean? Because of a little faint. I just skipped dinner. No, because of your hypertension. Well, it's under control now. It was a warning sign, Alice. You don't seem to hear me when I tell you that I remember how tiring it was working when I was pregnant and I didn't have an underlying condition. You need to take extra care. Get lots of rest. Well, I can't just lie in bed for my whole pregnancy. I'm not suggesting that, just that you look after yourself. <sighs> Don't walk, don't talk, don't smoke, don't drink, don't breathe. 
only a couple of months out of your life and it'll go quickly. Fine, I'll take a couple of days. It might take longer than that if I were you. Well, right, well, what? I'd leave work and take maternity leave from today, for the baby's sake. You're a waiter. Well, I, I thought I saw you on an ad in Australia. Yeah, no, I uh, I ditched the modelling and uh, swapped it for something more glamorous. You'll be happy to know I'm back for the trial. Yeah, no, I'd be happy if they just cancelled the whole thing. If it was up to me, but it's not, you know. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, Scarlett. Hi, everyone. Hi. So. How's my homeland? Oh, you know, rapidly turning into one big desert. Right. So the grass literally is greener this side of the ditch. It is, actually. You notice it flying in. And how long are you back in town? Oh, that depends on how the trial goes. I just want to say I'm really sorry for the way I behaved back then. Oh, that's cool. We were all a bit stupid. It was a long time ago. And you have our full support, Scarlett. I mean that. Should have seen that coming. Dad cancelling our lunch date. Too busy at work. Well, perhaps you'd like to join us. We're just going to have a quick bite to eat. Oh, thanks for the offer, but I might as well get out of here. I've got someone else I have to see. Sure. Thanks, though. Bye. Thanks, girlfriend. The body language tells all. Yes, she is an ex, but there's a whole lot more to it. Ah. To end badly. You could say that. She uh, goes to court next week for trying to kill me. Have you sorted the budget for Duncan's package? I'd say you'd bagged a new consultant. Oh, excellent. Ooh, you. Now, if only you could find me a new anaesthetist. Chris has nabbed Luke Durville. What? Signed him to an exclusive. Damn that Warner. The SID was designed to complement the existing surgical unit, not go into competition with it. Mm, it certainly looks as if Chris is after some kind of bidding war. And I'd be after some kind of sedative if you keep talking about work. Sorry. Point taken. Scarlett's looking well. Yeah, she is, eh? Her arrival clears up a few things, like why Craig Valentine's stress levels are through the roof. You think? From what I can gather, he's been scratchy since well before she turned up. True. His girlfriend issues kind of helped. Mm, maybe having his daughter around might calm him down a bit. Could go either way. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm. Perfectly fine. I wish they'd let me out of here. You know what I wish? What? That you and Dad would talk to each other. We do talk. At work. Properly talk. Come over for dinner tonight. <sighs> The way badly's going, I'll still be here for breakfast. Seriously. It'll be cool, the three of us. I don't think your dad would want me gate crashing your first night back. Dad doesn't know what he wants, but I know what he needs. You. I don't think so. Have you noticed how terrible he's looking at the moment? <laughs> Charmer. Well, he's tired and stressed because he's working too hard. And you know why he's working too hard? Because he's trying to fill the gap that you've left in his life. What's happened has happened. I can't change that. It'd feel better having you round, though. Especially now with my trial and everything coming up. He needs to relax, even if it's just for one night. I don't think I'd be any help. You could try. You still care about him, don't you? Yeah, but I've got to look after myself first. It's only dinner. I'll cook. You won't have to do anything. Please. If it means that much to you, and your dad agrees. He will. I know he will. Oh, careful. The wind will change and your face will stay like that. Oh, I can't find beds for next week's elective list. Normally I'd steal from elsewhere, but Edie's still working at full capacity. It's hopeless. Caroline gave you money to open more beds only yesterday. Yeah, and it relieved the pressure for a while, but it was really just a band-aid. There's a problem here that's not going to go away. I'm sure Callum is doing everything he can to sort it. So no being snide and ungrateful. Libby, I... Miss Jeffries, Miss Jeffries. Maya, some good news for you. Bring it on. 
The DHB has approved the extra budget you need for nurses to open up six extra beds, not just this week or next, but for a whole month. Really? That is amazing. Hmm? Well done, Callum. How did you wrangle that? Oh, I just employed a bit of charm and a bit of pressure. Thank you for coping so well so far. I know it hasn't been easy. Two years old, he ingested his mother's iron tablets. He then got agitated till stomach and diarrhea. All right, how long ago? Oh, about three hours. I didn't know until I found them on the floor. Recess, let's go, people. Uh, Dad. Sorry, baby, that's be quick. Uh, I'm cooking dinner at home tonight. Okay, great. And Alice is coming. What? Why? Because I want to catch up with her, and because she's the best thing that's ever happened to you, and you'll be a fool to let her go. Oh, no. Having your right time? Tommy's new rocks, I mean. Craig, I need your card! Come on, come on! Uh, Dad, I'll just see you at home. Get later, Scarlet. Okay, call security, get the master. <laughs> Where's Tanya with the diferoxamine? <laughs> She's on her way, just hang in there. Craig, the whole system was crashed. What are you telling me? We've got no access to any drugs? She's even staff locked in on some floors. They're, they're working urgently to fix it. They reckon maybe 10 odd minutes. We don't have 10 or 12 minutes. Damn it. Okay, watch yourselves. Uh, uh, Craig, no! Next box. 15 milligrams per kilo. Have the next 16 hours. That smashing glass, I heard anything to do with you. Good one. Where do I start? The alarms, the smash glass, the patients who saw the whole sorry thing? The little guy needed defaroxamine. He had iron toxicity. He was deteriorating. What would you rather I did? Sat around and twiddled my thumbs and waited for security? <laughs> they were already on their way. It was an urgent situation. Which was seconds away from being rectified without the need for violence. No, it was minutes away, OK? I'm sorry about all the mess, but I had no choice. Look, I understand the situation required action, but I cannot condone your behaviour. I think it's time you thought about booking yourself some time out. No, thank you. Craig, I saw Scarlet earlier. It can't be easy. I'm getting back to ED. We're still flat out. Yes, Libby is getting in a locum. You're taking the rest of the shift off. So, about this dinner tonight, is there anything you can't eat being pregnant? Actually, um, I've changed my mind. I'm not coming. Oh, you heard what happened with Dad in the window. I think he's gone psychic. What happened with your Dad in the window? Nothing. Anyway, I've realised Maya's right. I've had this big warning that I need to look after myself and my baby. I can't deal with any more stress, and I certainly can't absorb Craig's for him. I just can't. What are you saying? Are you ending it with him? Scarlett, that happened a long time ago. But he needs you. He's not coping. You should have seen him before. He completely lost it. He needs you. And I need to take care of the baby. And I know who comes first. Ready? Um, so. The bus leaves in 20 minutes. It's her. Bus? Yeah, Maya's dropping me at the terminal. I've got a friend. She runs a B&B in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to go stay with her for a while. Middle of nowhere. Oh, well, there is a medical centre, so I can get my blood pressure regularly monitored. Now, Matter Matter's only a short drive away, so Mum can come and visit if she can be bothered. But what's Dad supposed to do? He'll fall apart. He's already falling apart. Scarlett, you shouldn't be worrying about your dad so much. You've got enough on your plate. But there's a 50% chance that this baby is my little brother or sister. Look, please give it one more chance with Dad. We've given it one more chance too many times. I want this, Scarlet. I want to go. Take care. I'll be thinking of you. I've only assisted on a couple of craniofacial surgeries, but I'm keen to do more. Well, it's demanding work, but very rewarding. I'm hoping the SRD will make some significant breakthroughs in reconstructive technique. I guess you're only taking on the top people? Oh, and those with potential. Hello, hello. Hi and bye. I'm late for an appointment. I'll see you more. Bye. 
talking about the SRD, were you? It sounds so exciting. I can't wait to see how everything goes once it's all up and running. Hmm. Dad, quick. Alice is on her way to the bus station. She's gone to live in Matamata or somewhere. Right. If you hurry, you'll be able to catch her before she gets on the bus. Look, if she wants to leave town, it's her decision. And probably a wise one. That's it. You're not even going to try. No. Look, it's nice that you care, but it's over. Sometimes things don't turn out the way we'd hoped. Life isn't all happy endings. Yvonne Jeffries, this is for you. What is it? Open it and see. I am employee of the month. As part of your reward, you receive a month's use of the Prestige Car Park, dinner for two at one of the city's finest restaurants, and a little something in your pay packet. Oh, wow, lucky. I don't know what to say. How you dealt with the backlog of patients today was truly <coughs> remarkable. You went above and beyond the call of duty, and I thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr Mackay. <coughs> hey, how's it going? Great. There was nothing so enjoyable as spending the DHB's money. This new surgical unit's got you really excited, hasn't it? You bet. How do you do it, mate? After all these years, how do you stay so enthusiastic? What's brought this on? How does a DHP justify funding a three-ring circus? Well, I've got to beg for enough money just to keep the patients in beds instead of the corridors. Look, I know their decisions don't always appear to make sense, but... I'm beginning to think that nothing makes sense. I'm out of step with the new management. My personal life's a disaster. My daughter's due in court next week. How did it come to this? Things have worked themselves out, mate. And don't worry about Callum for a start. I'm not worried about him. I couldn't care less about him. I'm over it, Chris. Over what? The whole system. Every day I walk into that place hoping that this shift will be better than the last. And every day I end up going home feeling empty. I've been ignoring the signs, me losing the plot, overreacting, getting angry. Well, I shouldn't be there anymore. We all have crises of faith from time to time. No, it's more than that. I'm done, Chris. I'm done with medicine. I need to get out. Later tonight, former pop sensation Six come together on the Late Late Show to discuss their musical career and life since their chart-topping single, Whole Lotta Lovin', ten years ago. That's at 9.35 tonight.